Before I get into how to use Uvium, I'd like to give a brief tour of the application and lay down the conceptual framework of its user interface. The workspace is called the Ether. It's a two-dimensional surface upon which you can place bubbles. It's arbitrarily large. As bubbles are placed on it, it automatically resizes to make room for them. I like to think of the iPad as a window hovering above the Ether. I can use my finger to slide the Ether underneath it to view any section that I want. Uh, as I slide the Ether around, you can see there are a number of controls that hover above it. I call these controls hovers. In the upper left-hand corner is the Ether Selection Hover. This allows me to create new ethers and to flip between existing ones. In this case, I'm just going to create a new one. In the lower left-hand corner, there's a menu. Click into a few of the options here. In the upper right-hand corner is the Bubble Maker. This determines which type of bubble is created. To create a bubble in Uvium, I simply double tap anywhere on empty space. The second tool is the MechBub, which allows a user to define their own function. The third tool is the GridBub, which allows a user to create a spreadsheet-esque uh, table of numbers. In this case, I'll just create a GridBub with a few columns and enter in some data. And the fourth tool is a text bub, which allows the user to create um, nodes of a concept map. You can uh, label the nodes, create a few nodes here. And then they can link up the nodes in order to uh, show the relationships between them. Uh, which brings me to the lower right-hand corner. Uh, the bubbles in Uvium can be manipulated or edited. Only one bubble can be edited at a time. When a bubble is being edited, it will have focus, and an editor hover specific to that bubble will appear in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. On each editor, there will be an equal or an OK key that will close the bubble. At this point, uh, I have no bubbles being edited. In order to edit a bubble, I simply tap on it. In addition to the equal or OK key, oftentimes simply retapping a bubble will also end the editing session. If no bubble is currently being edited, it's possible to slide a bubble around relative to the other bubbles. I like to think of the ether as being a large piece of construction paper, with the bubbles as being little pieces of construction paper that are placed on top of it. Uh, if I were to simply put my finger on the construction paper and move it, they would all move together with one another. Um, but if I anchored the piece of paper with one finger, then I could move a bubble independent of the, uh, the rest of them. Now this anchoring technique I use in a number of different locations throughout Uvium. Uh, for example, on a desktop computer, when you right click on something, uh, it usually brings up a context menu relative to the thing that you clicked on. In Uvium, I try to get this same uh, functionality by using anchor tapping. So if you anchor and then tap on a bubble, it will bring up a context menu with relative options for that item. Now if you anchor and drag on empty space, it will create a lasso that you can use to select multiple bubbles. It will also bring up a context menu that's relevant to each of the bubbles that you've selected. Uh, you can also then anchor and drag all of the selected bubbles in concert with one another. Pretty useful. Uh, while you're editing expression, you can use anchor, tap, in order to change the position of your cursor. Now, within the grid bub, you can also use anchor dragging to change the order of the columns by dragging on the header, or order of the rows by dragging on the lefter. Okay, to sum up, within Uvium, at any one time, a bubble may be edited or no bubbles will be edited. In order to edit a bubble, I tap on it and that will bring up an editor and I can close it by either hitting equals or okay. Or in most cases, I can just retap the bubble again in order to close the editing. Which brings us to the end of this video. Uh, hopefully this lays down the conceptual groundwork for the UVM user interface. Uh, but of course, none of this tells you how to actually use UVM. 
For that, check out the Uvium Basics video, which will teach you how to do basic calculations within Uvium.